Hey, this is wildly surprising. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today is a challenge video. I love doing these because I think it's so important to expand our knowledge by just trying things that we've never tried before. So for today's challenge, I am going to attempt to paint an entire painting using only a fan brush. Now fan brushes are highly impractical for doing an entire painting. Now you might be asking, why are you doing this? I'm asking myself the same thing. Actually, there are two reasons. First, I think it's a valuable part of the human experience to subject oneself to doing hard things, things that will challenge us and make us a little bit uncomfortable. Ultimately, challenging yourself with things that you've never done before and that seem really hard or almost impossible, those are the things that will cause you to learn and grow. Secondly, I use fan brushes like never. So by forcing myself to do an entire painting relying solely on this odd and frustrating brush, hopefully I'll stumble upon some new techniques that I can use in future paintings. So those are my goals with this. I'll show you guys my reference photo. This one is a beautiful horse. I think it's in Iceland somewhere. I mean, look at that. It's astonishingly beautiful. And I did choose a rather scruffy looking horse because let's face it, we're probably not going to get great details with this little brush, but we're going to do our best. So I'm genuinely going to try hard to make this a painting that I like. Who knows? It might completely fail. So because this is an experiment, I didn't use my best paper for this. I'm using my Strathmore watercolor travel pad. So these are a little less expensive, but still cotton paper. So I can definitely still get good results with this, but I don't feel like I'm throwing it in the trash if it doesn't turn out. So, all right, let's do this. This fan brush, by the way, is, it's one that I got when I first started watercolor painting. It's by Susan Shu. Susan Shu? Shui? Shiwi. I don't know how you pronounce her last name. I'm so sorry. Miss Susan. So this is actually made by the Weber Art Company and it's just a synthetic fan brush and you can see it's not very discolored and that's just because I haven't used it that many times. I've already sketched on my horse and I just have my standard palette of 18 colors here with some water jars of course and paper towel. So where do we even start with something like this? I mean, normally I would start with some wet and wet washes in the background and I would have an idea of how I'm going to handle all the details in the horse, but this is going to throw me. I'm not going to lie. So I'm thinking what I'll do is maybe try starting the painting the way I normally would with some soft wet and wet background colors. And it's just going to take some playing around to figure out how to hold the brush, how to twist it, how to get the effects that I want. No time like now. Let's do this. So I'm just gonna dip the brush in water and start with the background. I'm gonna negative paint around the horse, but if a little of the color seeps into the horse, I'm not gonna let that bother me. So I'll just take clean water. Definitely a little harder to control my edges with this brush, but it is actually quite surprising how well you can control it. If you just take the little corner of it like this, you can actually get around those details pretty well. Ooh, here around the mane, I do want to be careful because that's going to be a white bit of horse hair overlapping the background. So I do have to paint around that. A little bit of careful negative painting. Ooh, with this brush? I don't know. Let's just go for it. So I have a nice glossy wet background. This is insane. I'm <laughs> oh, this brush. I'm already whining and I haven't even put any colors on yet. All right, let's start with phthalo blue. Gonna scoop some of that out, mix it up on my palette, and drop that in. Look at how funny that looks. I guess it can work for clouds, you know, if you just kind of slide your brush around like this. That works, yeah. Some light colored blue sky behind these clouds. You know, if you wet your paper, it almost doesn't matter what brush you use to apply wet on wet paint, because it's just gonna soften out anyway. So that was a safe start. <laughs> Okay, let's mix up a blue gray for the mountain back here. And for that, I'm gonna use burnt sienna and ultramarine, my favorite combo for a nice neutral gray color. Scoop this in, that's pretty light. I might need to go darker later. But there's a mountain back here. And I'm finding I'm having to kind of turn the brush on its side like this in order to get a narrower edge with the brush. Having to use just little portions of the fan brush, the side edge. This is something you can do if you're working with a flat brush too. You almost have to tilt it sideways to get a narrower edge, but it's definitely possible. I'm gonna take some more ultramarine in the mix here. Ooh yeah, much darker, stronger combo. Right here towards the ear, gotta slow down. Oh man, just hardly any control here. But you know what? That ear's black. Let's just take it right over the top. Let go of some control there. And here where the mountain edge meets the sky, 
it's okay if it's a little lumpy bumpy because that's going to be a soft edge anyway. Right, so there's actually quite a bit of green in the background here. I'm going to take some sap green, a little bit more of my ultramarine, drop that into this mountain slope right back here. I don't normally paint with a ton of water. I'm actually kind of a dry watercolor painter, but I'm finding it's helping me loosen up and it's helping me free up my style with this unexpected and somewhat frustrating brush. So we'll just be really careful around the mane there. The fan brush is actually quite handy for this because it's creating those separations for me. We're getting to use that a little bit here already. Then when we reach this grassy slope or hillside, we can just loosen up and scumble all that paint on. And I'm using the center of the brush right here to work my way around that edge. So far, I don't know if you can actually tell that it's just a fan brush only. There's quite a bit of linear shapes going on, and so that might be your first clue. But if someone were to say, hey, what kind of brush did you use for that? It might surprise them if you said it's just a fan brush. All right, now this little area up here is still damp, so I'm going to take some ultramarine and burnt sienna again. Oof, mixing with this brush is not the best. And we will try to paint this mountain right here. I'm going to use this little corner of the brush and try and carve out some of those mountain slope shapes while also leaving some white of the paper suggesting snow on the mountain. It feels so tense right now. <sighs> Relax. Okay. What's the worst that can happen, right? You might have to throw out a painting. No big deal. I'm already discovering that this brush is not as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually quite nice. It's holding the paint well, it's releasing the paint well, and with the pre-wet surface, I'm really actually liking, ooh, ooh, yeah, look at that mountain, it just pops right out. A little finger smoothing action maybe, and just like that, we have a nice mountain fading off in the distance that I don't honestly know that I would have painted it that way if I was just using a round brush. I like it. I'm going to add in some marine blue with this, and... Some ultramarine, a little more burnt sienna. You notice I'm just working on the background right now. I want to make sure I have a nice bed of color for my horse to stand out in. Let's add some more water in just to fill in that shape. Slowing down around the horse. Ooh, I'm seeing a bloom forming there. I had a bit too much water, but I honestly don't really mind blooms in the background too much. Don't mind. But yeah, I want to make sure my background is dark enough that it helps the horse pop forward because the horse is going to have a lot of white in its hair. I'm liking that texture this fan brush is able to achieve. It's forcing me, like I said, to just paint a little looser. I have to keep twisting and turning the brush for sure to get the shapes and the edges that I want. To some extent, I feel like anything good that's happening from this is a little bit lucky because I really don't know what I'm doing here. But I do love that mountain. And we'll begin to really use the side of the brush to kind of dollop on some more solid blocks of color. How does this brush do with lifting? Let's see. Oh, just fine. If you're okay with a clunky shape. I am genuinely just having fun with this. I think it's so freeing to just let yourself go and play. Now, something that is tricky with this brush is just getting a nice soft even flat wash. So right now I'm concentrating on this dark color which represents the mane just to the left of the horse's head here and slowing down enough so I can get an accurate edge allowing this kind of scratchy look on the side of the horse's body. Can't really tell it's a horse yet. Something that I'm struggling with a little bit is getting a good, obviously good sharp shapes anywhere, but I expected that with this brush. Okay, let's take some more green. Really go darker with our grass here. That's fun. So we're starting to see our horse popping out, starting to emerge because we've created a little bit of a darker background. So the horse is really coming forward. I'm genuinely scared about how to paint this horse using this brush. I'm not really sure how to approach this. I'm thinking I'll have to use the ends of the brush here for the most part. Let's start painting the horse. Let's see where this goes. Just scraping on a little bit of darker color. It is gonna look a little fuzzy, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think I'm gonna get any real strict edges here. Yeah, so I'm a little frustrated with this section. It's definitely, it's like, how do I, how do I turn it to get the right drawing angle? I'm finding I have to just use one of the little segments of bristles to get the edge that I need around the muzzle. It almost feels like I'm working with hay or straw or something, painting with a bristle, just a single bristle. Oh, it's so frustrating. Ah. 
This must be what it feels like when you work with a brush that's completely lost its point and just doesn't do what you want it to. There's a reason that we have different brushes for different purposes. Detail work is not the strong suit of this one. At any rate, we're making it work. We're doing our best. A little bit of scumbling, getting on some dark color. And you know, you can do a lot of this fun kind of dry layering. And this might be something I explore more. Maybe some more of this kind of texture, sort of a dry style for the grass here in the foreground could look really cool. And then if I want a smoother wash, I can just get more water and stretch that across. But I think we need to try to embrace the strengths of this brush and just work with it. So here's our opportunity to use the brush for what it does best, that is fur texture. I'm going to try to kind of step back from the painting and paint just a little further away. I think this will allow me to see it from a more abstract point of view and to see just the broader shadow shapes bigger shapes in general. I think I'm looking too closely at it and I'm trying too hard to get details too soon. That's something I tell my students all the time not to do and here I am doing it. So we'll just smooth that out a little bit. That looks better. And work with more water in the brush. Since we are working on a dry surface, you can definitely get away with more water in your brush. Let's do a wash in the face where the shadows are gonna be. So I see this kind of gray, this light gray, the whole forehead area is going to be pretty much just the white of the paper and we'll get to play with some fur texture and spots in the horse there. But here along the side of the head we can cover that up with gray. Some of that mane flowing across the background a little bit. But for the most part we want to let that just be white overlapping the dark background. I think the eyes are going to be a little tricky. We're going to have to use one of the edges of our fan brush to try to get those details in. We'll see how that goes. Yes, I do feel like with details, this brush makes me feel very clumsy. Like I don't know what I'm doing. What am I enjoying? Hmm. I'm enjoying the freedom to just use a bigger brush and cover broader areas quickly with some really interesting textural elements. That's what I'm enjoying about this brush. Yeah. Ooh, and let's add some more water in, leaving some of the paper untouched. It's dried over here already. So if you leave little areas, ooh, that texture is great. Untouched, you're gonna get this look of glazing lighter colors and darker colors and some negative painting around the grass, which is so interesting. Yeah, so this brush is wonderful, as you can imagine, for foliage and grass. I think that's truly what this brush was made for. So these areas in the background feel almost effortless with this brush. I'm not hating it so far. Definitely not the best painting I've ever done, but considering the restrictions, I'm okay with it. Let's pop in the blackest blacks that we see in the reference photo, and that's gonna help us adjust all of our values. We're just gonna do our best. Oh, that's an ugly edge. Actually, not that bad. And you know, this actually works really well for getting a little bit of that negative painting around the hair overlapping the ear. Nice white mane hair coming in front of the black ear and that looks quite convincing. And wherever possible connecting our shapes, connecting our dark shadows. Truly there's so much to be learned from an exercise by this. Should never scare you, but actually fill you with excitement and wonder and sometimes delight and surprise when you discover something new. Something you never did before, something you didn't think was possible. I almost wish I had chosen a bear or something super fluffy to paint. I don't know why I chose this. <laughs> Maybe because I knew it would be so much more challenging. Okay, well this is working well. I'm liking this. The forelock flowing over the forehead. It's actually, fan brush works really great. I'm just feathering it, creating these wonderful fine strands of flowing hair. Okay, the eyes are by far the most frustrating thing to paint with this with this brush. I'm having the hardest time just getting the shapes I want. So really, really having to let go of expectations here. I'm tempted to just try this end of the brush. Hey, why not? <laughs> this is working better for details. Oh, so funny, but it's not cheating. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That worked better. <laughs> 
it's important with any painting, not just one like this, but to not have all your brush strokes going the same direction. It adds some really nice variety when you mix up the direction of your brush strokes. Also helps give us a sense of the form of the creature if you're painting an animal like this. We're running into the danger of it looking overworked. And this is my tendency. I just have a hard time with looser painting and with just letting it do its thing. And that's what watercolor is known for, right? The spontaneity, the looseness. So I need to let that go a bit. I'm gonna use more water. Normally I would say be conservative with how much water you use, but on a painting like this, I don't think you're gonna be able to let go unless you use more water, within reason, of course. I'm really loving all these fun layers in the background. I don't know how great this looks, honestly. I don't know if I'll be able to say, yeah, that was a definitive success, but I sure have learned a lot about this brush and how to use it, how not to use it. And I think this brush is gonna be so fabulous. And I definitely think I need to use this brush for an upcoming landscape I'm planning to do. It's just a mountain scene with lots of grass in the foreground. I think this brush will be perfect for that. Maybe not for painting a horse, but yeah, let's take a look. Let's see, what do you think? Since this was my only tool today, I would consider this one a moderate success. <laughs> Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you'd like to see another challenge like this with any other unexpected brushes that you would recommend or supplies. I'm always open for trying new things and I encourage you all to do the same. There's no better way to practice your skills, to challenge yourself and to just grow as an artist. If you like these challenge videos, check out this timed challenge where we try to paint something in five minutes. I'll see you over there.